Welcome and thank you for joining us. You are watching Millennium News Hour and I am Tanzeev Nauri. Today we have brought up and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines. Moments after a jury was complete, a man outside the courthouse set himself on fire, a witness said. Opening statements in Trump's historic trial set to begin Monday after 10th day of jury selection. Dozens of pro-Palestinian protesters arrested as Colombia clears encampment. Google fires 28 staff after protests against cloud contract with Israel. Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson presented the State of the Union budget. Taylor Swift releases the Tortured Poets Department double album ahead of Record Store Day. U.S. had advance warning of Israel attack on Iran. U.S. stops U.N. from recognizing a Palestinian state through membership. Brazil's President Lula creates two new indigenous territories, bringing total to ten. People killed in Israeli raid in West Bank as the U.S.-EU sanction more settlers. Over 60% voter turnout in first phase of India's vote. Kenya's military chief among 10 people killed in helicopter crash. And Rohit says India-Pakistan test cricket would be awesome. You are listening to headlines, now news in detail. A man set himself on fire inside the designated protest area outside of the Trump trial in New York, a witness said. The New York Police Department already had a heavy presence outside of the courthouse due to the high profile of this case. As smoke emerged from the dedicated protest area, they rushed to find what looked like a fire extinguisher. An injured man was being placed in an ambulance in critical condition and transported to a hospital. The New York City Police Department said Friday afternoon following reports that a person set themselves on fire outside the courthouse. Police said they responded at 1.37 p.m. to the vicinity of 80 Center Street for an aided mill. The fire is out and the investigation is ongoing, authorities added. A video appears to show that moments after setting himself on fire, the man lay on the ground burning. At times, he appeared to cease. Police tried to use a small fire extinguisher to put the fire out but were unsafe successful. While still on fire, the man tried to sit up. Police then used a large extinguisher to put out the fire. Jury selection has been completed for former President Donald Trump's New York hush money trial, setting the stage for opening statements in the first ever criminal trial of a former president to begin Monday. We have our full panel, Judge Yuan Merchant declared after they added the last of the six alternates who will serve alongside the panel of 12 jurors. The 12 and 1 alternate had been chosen by the end of the day Thursday. The five remaining alternative juror spots were filled despite an intense atmosphere that resulted in two potential jurors breaking down in tears and three saying they were too anxious 
to be on the jury. The five alternates who were ultimately selected Friday include an unemployed married woman who is into art and described herself as not political, an audio professional, a contract specialist, a clothing company executive, and a construction company project manager. The day began with the judge calling up the 22 remaining potential jurors from the previous pool of 96 to answer questions des designed to indicate whether they could be fair and impartial about the divisive real estate mogul and presumptive Republican nominee for president. More than 100 pro-Palestinian protesters have been arrested on the campus of New York's Columbia University as police cleared an encampment set up by students demonstrating against Israel's war in Gaza. Several students involved in the protest said they also were suspended from Columbia and its associate institution, Bernard College, including Isra Hirsi, who is the daughter of Ilhan Omar, a Democrat in the United States House of Representatives. Colombia's president, Nehmat Shafiq, said she had authorized police to clear the dozens of tents set up by protesters because they had breached the university's rules and policies against holding unauthorized demonstrations and were unwilling to engage with administrators. New York City Mayor Eric Adams said police made more than 108 arrests for trespassing. Two people were also charged with obstructing government administration. Students have a right to free speech but do not have a right to violate university policies and disrupt learning on campus. He said Thursday's move to clear the camp came after a congressional hearing at which Shafiq was questioned on alleged anti-Semitism on campus. She was also challenged by Omar on alleged targeting of pro-Palestinian protesters. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. world continuously revolving around various events every minute every second something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment here we come millennium news hour to get you connected with top usa and international trending news which includes local news political news world news business news health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on millennium news 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at tv such as sony samsung lg roku tv amazon tv and apple tv and also in all european countries and australia available with sky network worldwide jago tv radiant ip tv worldwide jago bd network and horizon satellite globally Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Google has fired 28 employees following a sit down protest over the tech giant's contract to provide cloud computing and artificial intelligence services to the Israeli government. The terminations come after the group No Take for Upper Height on Tuesday occupied Google offices in California and New York to protest the $1.2 billion contract known as Project Nimbus. Video of the demonstrations shared on social media showed police arresting employees in the office of Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian. In a statement on Thursday, Google said that physically impeding employees and preventing them from accessing company facilities was a clear violation of our policies and completely unacceptable behavior. After refusing multiple requests to leave the premises, law enforcement was engaged to remove them to ensure office safety, a spokesperson said. We have so far concluded individual investigations that resulted in the termination of employment for 28 employees and will continue to investigate and take action as needed. Google also denied that the contract was related to weapons or intelligence services. 
Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson presented the State of the Union budget at Cardinal Hayes High School 650 Grand Concourse in Bronx, New York on Thursday, April 18. The five borough presidents, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, City Controller, City Speaker and Public Advocate, five borough district attorneys, city councillors, police commissioners and committee dignitaries attended the budget presentation ceremony. Media partners were Millennium TV USA and Millennium News 24. The news was reported by Mr. Tafadir Noor of Millennium TV. On Friday, Taylor Swift, the pop star, released her 11th album, The Tortured Poets Department, an amalgamation of her previous work and reflecting the artist who, at the peak of her powers, has spent the last few years re-recording her life's work and touring its material, filtered through synth-pop anthems, break-up ballads, provocative and matured considerations. Fans celebrated Swift's midnight release of the tortured poets department with listening parties and themed gatherings. Many critics praised Swift in their reviews. Swift surprised fans at 2 a.m. ET with news of 15 extra songs. The album, which Swift announced at the Grammys, features collaborations with Post Malone and Florence plus The Machine. Swift descri described writing the album as deeply personal. Once we have spoken our saddest story, we can be free of it, she said. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now it's time for global updates. Explosions echoed over an Iranian city on Friday in what sources described as an Israeli attack, but Tehran played down the incident and indicated it had no plans for retaliation, a response that appeared gauged towards averting region-wide war. The limited scale of the attack and Iran's muted response appeared to signal a successful effort by diplomats who have been working to avert all-out war since an Iranian drone and missile attack on Israel last Saturday. The United States received advance notice of Israel's reported strike on Iran but did not endorse the operation or play any part in its execution. U.S. media quoted officials as saying, NBC and CNN, citing sources familiar with the matter and a U.S. official respectively, said Israel had provided Washington with pre-notification of the strike. Various networks cited officials confirming a strike had taken place inside Iran, with CNN quoting one official as stating the target was not a nuclear facility. Israel told the United States on Thursday it would be retaliating against Iran in the coming days, a senior U.S. official told CNN. We didn't endorse the response, the official said. According to CNN, there was no immediate comment from the White House about the Israeli strike. 
The United States on Friday effectively stopped the United Nations from recognizing a Palestinian state by casting a veto in the Security Council to deny Palestinians full membership of the world body. It vetoed a draft resolution that recommended to the 193-member UN General Assembly that the State of Palestine be admitted to membership of the UN, Britain and Switzerland abstained, while the remaining 12 council members voted yes. The United States continues to strongly support a two-state solution. This vote does not reflect opposition to Palestinian statehood, but instead is an acknowledgement that it will only come from direct negotiations between the parties. Deputy U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Robert Wood told the Council, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas condemned the U.S. veto in a statement as unfair, unethical and unjustified. Israel's Foreign Minister Israel Katz commended the United States for casting a veto. President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva on Thursday announced the creation of two new indigenous territories for Brazil, bringing the total number of new reserves during this term to 10. The Kesik Fonchora Reserve will be in Mato Grosso State and the Aldea Velha Territory will be in Bahia State. They will cover a combined total area of almost 132 square miles. Speaking at a ceremony in Brasilia, Lula said indigenous peoples should be patient as he seeks to fulfill his pledge of creating 14 new territories. Lula's predecessor, Jair Bolsonaro, had encouraged widespread development of the Amazon, both legal and illegal, and made good on his pledge to not demarcate a single centimeter of additional indigenous land. Lula took office in 2023, pledging to change that, but indigenous rights activists hoped he would move faster. Last year, he demarcated six territories in April and two more in September. The Brazilian president said during his speech that the latest two new territories would not be enough. He cited legal issues for the delay in setting aside additional lands. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. You are watching latest global updates. The United States and European Union have imposed sanctions targeting hardliner Israeli settlers engaged in violence against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. The EU said on Friday that the European Council slapped sanctions on four extremist Israeli settlers and two entities over serious human rights abuses against Palestinians. The decision was the second part of an agreement among EU member states that saw sanctions against Palestinian group Hamas over its October 7 attack on southern Israel. The move to target violent settlers in the West Bank comes two months after the US and Britain took similar steps. The EU put two radical organizations, Lehava and the Hilltop Youth, on its asset freeze and visa ban blacklist for their attacks on Palestinians. It also included Hilltop Youth leaders Mir Ettinger and Alicia Yeret, along with settlers Neria Ben Pazi and Yunun Levy.
It said abuses included torture and other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment and the violation of right to property and to private and family life of Palestinians in the West Bank. The first of India's almost 1 billion voters cast ballots on Friday in the country's multi-day election as Prime Minister Narendra Modi seeks a rare third term on the back of issues such as growth, welfare and Hindu nationalism. The vote pits Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party against an alliance of two dozen opposition parties that promise greater affirmative action and more handouts while stressing what they call the need to save democratic institutions. Nearly 970 million people are eligible to vote in the seven-phase exercise, the world's largest election, which runs through the peak of summer until June 1, with results set for June 4. Election Commission figures after polls closed on Friday's first day of voting estimated voter turnout at over 60 percent, with the small northeastern state of Tripura top of the list at 79.90% and the northwestern state of Rajasthan at the bottom at 51%. TMC-controlled West Bengal reported 77.57% voter turnout. Kenya's military chief, General Francis Agola, was among 10 people killed when their military helicopter crashed shortly after takeoff on Thursday. President William Bruto announced the aircraft, which had been on a visit to troops deployed in northwest Kenya to combat endemic cattle rustling, came down just minutes after leaving Cheptel Boys Secondary School in West Pokot County, Ruto said. Two soldiers survived the crash and were in hospital, he said, adding that an air investigation team had been sent to discover the cause. Our motherland has lost one of our most valiant generals, Ruto told a news conference. The demise of General Ogola is a painful loss to me. Ogola was previously the head of the Kenyan Air Force before rising to deputy military chief and then being promoted by Ruto last year to head the military. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 17,458.77. The NYSE composite is increased by 70.68 points or 0.41%. Tokyo's stock close price is 37,068.35. The Nikkei 225 index is decreased by 1,011.35 points or 2.66%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,065.26. The Shanghai index is decreased by 8.96 points or 0.29%. Hong Kong stock close price is 16,224.14. The Hang Seng index is decreased by 161.73 points or 0.99%. Bombay stock close price is 73,088.33. The Sensex index is increased by 599.34 points or 0.83%. Let's have a look on today's sports story. India captain Rohit Sharma has thrown his support behind any resumption of test cricket against arch rivals Pakistan, saying it would be awesome. The South Asian neighbors are bitter political adversaries and have fought 
three wars against each other since they were partitioned at the end of British colonial rule in 1947. Their cricket teams have not faced off in a test since 2007. Instead, they play only occasionally in the shorter versions of the game and usually on neutral territory in international tournaments. Rohit appeared Thursday on a YouTube chat show hosted by former captains Adam Gilchrist of Australia and Michael Vaughan of England. Asked by Vaughan if playing Pakistan in a test series would be beneficial for the five-day game, Rohit said, I totally believe that. They are a good team, super bowling lineup, good contest. Especially if you play in overseas conditions, that will be awesome added the 36-year-old. I would love to. It would be a great contest between two sides, so why not? Australia has said it would be prepared to host a series between the rivals. India and Pakistan have not faced each other on either side's soil in a bilateral series since 2012. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast. Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. Moments after a jury was complete, a man outside the courthouse set himself on fire, a witness said. Opening statements in Trump's historic trial set to begin Monday after a tense day of jury selection.
dozens of pro-Palestinian protesters arrested as Colombia clears encampment. Google fires 28 staff after protests against cloud contract with Israel. Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson presented the State of the Union budget. Taylor Swift releases the Tortured Poets Department double album ahead of Record Store Day. U.S. had advanced warning of Israel attack on Iran. U.S. stops U.N. from recognizing a Palestinian state through membership. Brazil's President Lula creates two new indigenous territories, bringing total to ten. People killed in Israeli raid in West Bank as the US-EU sanction more settlers. Over 60% voter turnout in first phase of India's vote. Kenya's military chief among 10 people killed in helicopter crash. And Rohit says India-Pakistan test cricket would be awesome. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel and visit our website. Our website address is www.millenniumnews24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.